Hi, uh, I just wanted to show everybody something that I came up with the other day. I think this is really neat. Um, so sometimes you kind of want to break up the lines in your websites. And so we have uh, right here, you can kind of see this is kind of like a little rip that you can see in a website. Kind of gives um, a little bit more depth to the web page itself. I think it's really easy to do as well. So I just kind of want to show everybody how um, you get to this point. So this is what my starter template looks like right now. And so what we need, want to do is put a rip right here. And this is really simple to do. And I can put this image in the comment section. But all this is is just a little image like this. It's 600 pixels wide by 60 pixels tall. And it just repeats on the x-axis. So it's just a small image that gets repeated over and over again on the top and the bottom of the div. So just to um, let's go ahead and take a look at how you do this. So let's just make a new document. We're going to make this 600 pixels by 60 pixels high. Resolution is going to be at 150 pixels and RGB color. Let's go ahead and create something new. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new layer. And we're actually going to get rid of this whole bottom layer that's white to start off with. All right. And so next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the brush. And you know it's going to be just 10 pixels. We're going to use um, a really light color like F7, F7, F7. And we're just going to take this and we're just going to give it a kind of a straight line. Go ahead and be a little bit jagged if you want to. And so this is going to be the base for our uh, rip right here. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And there's a couple things we need to make sure that we have. First thing is that we need to make sure the seams on both sides are going to be correct. We want to make sure that it has just a little bit of a drop shadow down here. And we want to make sure that we can kind of get an idea for how it's going to look. So coming back to this first image, what we have down here is this is completely white. And then this is the rip inside of it. If we come to our web page, you can see that down here, this white part is actually part of the image, and this gray part is the part of the rip. So whatever's transparent on the image itself is going to be what you set the background color to be on this div. In this one, I'm just using Bootstrap, so I just use Bootstrap, the background primary. So let's come back into here. Um, one thing about rips is that they're not really uniform because, you know, it's obviously you ripped it. So we have a little bit more jagged lines. You can see that this line comes up, this line goes down. And so we want to do that inside of Photoshop. And so this one, it's very parallel along this axis. And we want to get rid of that. So I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to go to Filter. I'm going to go to Liquify. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can kind of get an idea for this. And I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to kind of pull and kind of push pixels around. And I'm just going to do this for the whole thing all the way around it. And it does not have to be pretty because rips aren't pretty in, in of themselves. Just kind of make it a little bit more, um, give it a little bit more depth to it. That would be good for now. We can always go in and clean up what we don't like later on with the stamp tool. So we'll call that good. So the first thing we need to do is let's just kind of test to make sure this is going to look the way we want it to look. I'm just going to come over here, I'm going to make a new layer, I'm going to put this below it. And this one, I'm actually just going to pick any color that I want. And I'm just going to hit Alt Delete. It's going to fill in the whole background color on this layer. And then I'm going to make another layer that's going to be right above this. And I'm going to make this white. And let's see, I'm going to come in and grab this lasso tool. I'm just going to kind of carefully draw and make sure I'm somewhere in the middle right here. Oops. Let's see. Let's try that again. Now that that's there, I'm going to make sure that we got this selected. I'm going to do Alt Delete on this new layer as well. And I'm going to deselect with Command D. All right. So now we have this white layer, which is going to be this white layer down here. 
we have this rip layer, which is going to be this layer right here. And we have this color, which is actually going to serve as just a, as just kind of like a placeholder for this color right here. We're going to end up throwing that layer away. So now what we want to do is let's take this top layer, which is this middle, um, the gray rip, and we're going to double click here. I'm going to go to drop shadow. And I like to keep mine as just a very subtle drop shadow, which is going to be um, on the darkened blending mode. One pixel distance of then zero for spread, zero for size. Noise, I kind of bumped it up to three, didn't really do anything. But that's all it really took. Oh, and sorry, 10% opacity as well. So go ahead and click OK on that. All right, so now I'm to this point that I want to make sure that both of the sides are seamless. I'm not guaranteed that this side is going to match up perfectly with this side right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first I'm going to throw this away. I don't need that anymore. And then I'm going to hit Command Shift E, and that's going to flatten this layer. So now I'm just going to take my marquee tool, I'm going to draw somewhere in the center, and I'm going to hit Command J, which is going to duplicate whatever was on that selection. All right. So now I'm just going to take this layer with the Move tool, and I'm going to move it all the way over to the edge until it snaps. All right. And then I'm going to unhide this layer. And I'm actually going to move that all the way over here as well. Sorry, I got the wrong one. I'm going to move the bottom layer all the way over until um, you can see this gap, and I'm just going to move it back over until it snaps again. All right, so now this side will line up perfectly with this side. So now all we have to do is just kind of figure out this little awkward area right here. Again, I'm just going to hit Command Shift E, I'm going to flatten that layer. I'm going to go in and zoom. It's like I have some weird colors here from when I um, tried to do a little bit of cleaning up. Not a big deal. Um, so here we go. I'm just going to clean that up. All right. And if you really want to, you can go ahead and double check this again. Just choose a color. Choose like a lighter blue this time. Alt delete. And we can kind of see what it's going to look like. And I'm not super happy with this part, so I'm going to grab the eraser. I'm just going to kind of shave some of that off. Just like that. But here we go. So now we have a piece that will be seamless on both these sides and it looks pretty clean on this end. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this. Command Shift S for save as and we're going to come in go down to PNG and I'm going to name this RIP. All right. So now we have the seamless pattern that we can use and when I come in to look at my code, this is the code for the example with the rip. I have this um, style put inside of here. And all you need to do with that is come into the uh, div that you want to have that rip inside of it. So I gave it a BG primary to give it that blue background. And I'm just going to give it an extra color or an extra bit of code named rip. So I'm going to come up to this file, show you how that's done. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to say rip. When I save that, it's actually not going to do anything on here if I refresh it, because it doesn't have any of the CSS, obviously. And so now I'm just going to come up here, I'm just going to copy this code, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to paste it. And so just to explain what this does, is this is given the, the div itself a margin of 0 and 0. So make sure that everything's at zero. And I can actually take that out. And so now with this rip, this is using the pseudo element, and it's going to use the background element for the rip. Actually, we just named it rip, not rip example. It's going to make it center so when you take the screen, it, it will come in and the the rip is actually going to come in from the center. It's not going to come in from this side. Uh, 
give it some a height of 60 pixels, which is the height of the image itself. I'm going to repeat it on the X axis, so it doesn't repeat on the Y, it'll just repeat on the X. Display block, and then give it some margins to kind of fit. The before element is actually a little bit different because what it's using is the um, same image, but it's going to be flipped upside down and it's going to be reversed. So if we come over here, we will see that you know some of these edges are going to be the same as these edges right here. So these two kind of match up. This matches up with over here. It's just the same image, just flipped upside down. So that way you only have to give one class to the same div tag and you get a really cool looking um, rip element. So this is the file that we're working on. Let's go ahead and save that. Come back over here and refresh. And there we are. We have this little rip element. So if I pull it in from the center, it will give it some on both sides. If we make it really small, like you were on a mobile screen, it'll still work well that way. And um, it just it's just a really nice way to kind of break up the, the web page a little bit. So hopefully you found this helpful in some ways. I'd like to see what you guys come up with. So if you want to put a link in the comments to what you've worked on, um, I think that would be really cool.